Hi, it's Jennifer from A Country Life, and as many of you know, we are cranberry farmers, and today I am in the kitchen making one of my most requested uh, cranberry recipes of all time. And that recipe is cranberry bars with cream cheese frosting. Before we get started with the recipe though, I just thought I'd give you a quick look at what we're actually making here today. These are cranberry bars with cream cheese frosting, and this is just kind of a quick visual for you. So you know if you actually want to stick around and find out what the recipe is. But believe me, you're going to want to because they are so, so good. You may be able to hear some of the sounds of outside. I'll just point out right away, we are having some absolute gorgeous weather lately. Uh, we had been up in the 90s to basically a hundred for many 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 days in a row and super humid but it is beautiful now. I have the kitchen windows open and I can hear kids playing and trucks and pounding and whatever else is going on outside but if you can um, get past that and if you guys can get past cooking with someone who has all kinds of dirty dishes in their kitchen uh, Let's just get right to this and let's do it. All right, we're just gonna get started here. I assembled all my ingredients quickly. Today I'm actually using uh, pecans because I'm out of walnuts, but typically I would use walnuts. So I'm just gonna get started putting everything into the bowl. so that was it super easy ingredients mixing this up only took me probably three or four minutes I do not slice up my cranberries so many recipes call for chopped or sliced or even ground cranberries so often we like the flavor of a nice tart cranberry um, amidst the sugary sweet dough so you have to do you but um, for the most cranberry flavor just leave those babies whole. I sprayed my pan and I'm just gonna use a glass pan uh, because I have a cover for this. Otherwise, any nine by 13 pan will do, glass, metal, whatever. And if you're really trying to make a great big batch, a big half sheet pan, like one of those big Nordic Ware half sheet pans that, I don't even know what the size are, but anyways, it's called a half sheet pan. Uh, I just double this recipe and I can put it into that. Um, and it just makes a really big batch for if you have like a potluck or something like that because I can guarantee you every single one of these bars will get eaten. Um, they are so good and every single time I take them someplace I'm asked for the recipe. Every single time someone will say, is there lemon? I feel like I taste, like I can taste lemon. No, nope, no lemon. Oh, is there some other zest? No, nope, nothing. It is just flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, vanilla, eggs, cranberries and nuts. I mean, that is it. It's so simple, but I, like I said, I guarantee you, you're, you're just going to love these. They are so good. So let's get this dough into my glass pan, and then we're going to bake them at 350 degrees for about 40. Let me just look really quick just to make sure. And we're going to bake them for about 40 to 45 minutes depending on how kind of dark you like them. It is summer and cranberries are not um, in, in season right now, so I'm working with frozen cranberries. It does make the dough quite stiff, but that's okay. Just press the dough in the best you can. Usually if you get your fingers wet with cold water, that works really, really well. So I'm gonna start by just pressing it down with this great big wooden spoon. And that's not working so great. Actually, since it's so cold, I don't even need to wet my fingers. It's getting pushed in nicely. It looks like there's a lot of cranberries. Um, and that's because there are. Because just about every cranberry recipe I add extras to. So I'm going to take some of these and push them over into this dough. Just to make sure that it cooks up nicely. Alright, we'll take some of those, push them over there. 
You don't have to be perfect when pressing the dough in. As it gets hot, it'll kind of even itself out and it'll, it'll work out perfectly. Trust me on that one. Now that I have those bars put in the oven, I think it's time I tackle this mess. What does a doodad do? Where did you hear the word doodad? Uh, on Pinkalicious. Oh, a doodad is just like a little trinket. And you and it can and you can make it do whatever you want it? Pretty much. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. Okay. Oh my gosh, she's so dang sweet. I really got things cleaned up here. I'm just I just have a few dishes left to wash and the bars have ten more minutes. Okay, so I have just a quick little story here for you. The other day Maria, Maria, <laughs> real life everybody, that's what's going on here. She's just singing in her high-pitched little four-year-old girl voice. But anyways, so the other day, um, uh, I there was a comment on, I think it might have been the snack time video where we made popsicles. And anyways, I had shown a picture of our sink. Wow, it's getting really loud, just a minute. Joel, Joel, you've got to turn that down a little. All right, I'm back. So, and in that video, I was filling up a little pitcher with water for making the popsicles, and I had some video of my sink. And apparently, the video showed that my sink was quite dirty. And I actually had a commenter um, just give me a quick tip as to something to clean my sink with. Uh, they had mentioned Comet, which is something that I grew up using. Uh, now I just tend to use SOS pads. So just for the record, here we go. There's my nice sparkling clean sink. It's funny to me with, um, and this is just a little reflection on YouTubing in general. It's funny to me how um, what just goes unnoticed to me because it's just part of my everyday life. Uh, when you put that on video for everybody to see, wow, they really see a lot of little details like the cupboard doors in the background or a dirty sink or um, what else did I, somebody had made, I can't even remember anymore. But anyways, I get little comments on different things that people see in my videos that just go right, right over my head in editing. What I'm really trying to say in all of this is that we as YouTubers, we really open up our family and open up our home to all of you, and we love comments, okay? I, I know that, well, I'll just speak for myself. I love comments. I love it when people give me tips, some different cleaning tips here over the past year. I've gotten some great cooking tips and some shopping tips, and I love those. But for those of you who really do love commenting, I just... <laughs> Um, give you just a little tiny reminder that um, those comments are being read and to just be polite just be very nice and very polite and I'm sure the person who commented about my sink was not doing it out of a uh, meanness at all it was a very very sweet comment about you know just giving me kind of a heads up like hey this would be something to clean your sink um, so that that's it I'm gonna get back to washing my dishes so this is just a gentle reminder to be nice um, let's keep this a place of building people up and not tearing them down. That's something I say to my kids all the time. Are you building each other up or tearing each other down? And I think that that rule really pertains to YouTube as well. So just a quick reminder, be nice. And I'm going to open up my dirty oven for everybody to see. And the, there are the bars. I'm going to put these in for a few more minutes because as you can see, this little center here is um, maybe not quite as golden brown as the rest. So I'm going to put that in for just a few more minutes. All right, so now they are nicely done. I'm going to let these cool completely before putting frosting on. Once they are cooled, I'm going to make a cream cheese frosting, slather that over the top, and we'll serve them up. I really think that they're best served cold, but that's how I like all my desserts, cold with a very firm frosting. But you might like them room temperature with a real soft, creamy frosting. It's really up to you.